So yeah, in my uh, horror story, I talk about this other kin chick named Crystal. I think uh, I should probably gone into more detail, but that video was long enough. So I'm gonna address this now. So this one time we had a girl join in. She told us that her player character was a human sorcerer. She was lawful neutral. But the thing that caught my eye was her player character thinks that she's a dragon. She said she loved RP, which is, you know, one of my more favorite parts of d, &D. It's what I really, really like. I don't do NPC voices. Uh, I do more of like a laid back, lazy approach. Actions, attitudes, facial expressions, that kind of thing. So the party went on this adventure. The party consisted of Crystal, the other kin chick that I just mentioned, uh, Lily, the human life cleric, Thane, the Oathbreaker paladin, Lou, the dwarf Boston rogue, Watches UP, a lizard folk ranger, by far one of my favorite names, by the way, and Bird Person. Uh, he was a air cockroach monk, and yes, he talked exactly like Bird Person from Rick and Morty. So the party were sent to a temple to find out what the hell is going on, because uh, several small villages in the nearby uh, in nearby area were saying that there was children missing, and some strange noises and lights and activity can be seen near the entrance of this long forgotten temple. So the party enters the temple and they're confronted by a group of lizard shamans. So unfortunately, the lizard folk got a surprise round. They went first. So one of them ends up biting Crystal because she was the first one in the lane, line, whatever. And not to mention, you know, aside from being closest, she was also really super squishy. I mean, lizard folk could tell that. So when the lizard man bit her, she legit began to cry out in pain, like like whimpering and stuff like that. Like we were just thinking, oh man, you know, you're just really good at RP, I guess, or whatever. So one lizard man goes down, there's three left. So it goes to Crystal's turn. Okay. Wow, I was not prepared for this. Not prepared. So she says to me, I'm going to cast Chromatic Orb. She, I shit you not, began to go into every single fucking detail about casting the spell. It legit took longer on her turns to do fucking anything, okay? The lizard folk would have a full round, okay, by the time she's done doing whatever the hell her one action is, okay? Just to be clear, she went into detail about everything. Casting spells, fucking everyday normal actions, fucking looking at something is a deeply moving and spiritual thought-provoking fucking thing, okay? I digress. She says, Crystal begins to move her body, her arms, fingers, legs, feet, and toes. She begins to focus her energy. She begins to remember when her mother taught her of these spells in a land that was overtaken by the goblin hordes. The day when she lost her father, her brother, her mother, on that day, she lost her kingdom and became human. Crystal begins to flow like water, up and down and all around, creating a shockwave of force and sound. The ground begins to crack, the ceiling begins to shake. A giant purple dragon head begins to form in one hand. A pink dragon head begins to form in the other. The golden dragon jewelry that she wears begins to glow, the same jewelry that was given to her by her father, the king. She clapped the dragon's heads together, creating a fully formed dragon which goes gliding and dancing and strikes the lizard man with a lightning flutter strike. The dragon comes fluttering back into, my ha uh, into her hands to break into purple and pink dragon heads, disappearing. Crystal sheds a tear for she will never become a full dragon. The room is silent. So I asked what appears to be in a booming voice because she was pretty much whispering that entire fucking novel. So, uh, what spell was that? And I immediately start giggling, because I just, I just processed all this verbal diarrhea, right? And no joke, without skipping a heartbeat, as I start laughing, right? Thane immediately says, Uh, dude, Chromatic Orb is you just throw a fucking magic softball, dude. Stop wasting our time. It's been like two fucking hours for this Scrubloid encounter. Holy shit. Well, the entire room started just laughing, right? I, I was pretty bad. 
But just for context, if you wondered what the spell actually looks like, you create a magic softball-sized object made out of whatever elements you want it to be. So, you know, you could have it ice, fire, lightning, poison, wh whatever you want there. Well, she was extremely butthurt by this point. So I say to her immediately as I started looking through her player sheet, I was like, I think it's kind of funny too that your character believes that she's a dragon. It's it's kind of, you know, kind of childish. You know what I mean? Because you're a sorcerer, you have dragon blood, right? Well, shit. She starts to freak the fuck out. She goes, I'm a dragon, okay? Just because you're happy with your two legs and yourself being stuck on the earth doesn't mean we can all be content. The room went quiet for a second. Fame began laughing so fucking hard, it began to distort his mind. So I had to immediately mute him. So I asked her, uh, what? She then said uh, she, uh, she couldn't talk to us about this because she was very emotional at the time and very upset. And she just didn't want to talk about it at this very moment. And me being me, I uh, immediately said, I thought dragons had thicker scales. Than, than us two leggers. Well, that loony shit just be, just fucking began and started yelling and screaming at us and all kinds of things. And one of the things that she said to me immediately gave me a red flag, which was, you people just don't understand me, okay? Just because you don't understand my high intellect. Okay, kill yourself. If you ever say that line out loud, or you know anybody that says that shit, they're literally just trying to convince themselves that they're not retarded. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this Tavern Tales.